All right. Hello, everyone. Today is Monday, October 2nd. It is four o'clock, and this is the meeting of the City Council Committee on City Services. Um, our um, agenda today, the first thing we have is roll call. Laura, would you go ahead and do that? Sure. Uh, Councillor Foster. I'm here. Councillor Gore. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. And Councillor Perry, we know will be joining later. Not present at, at the moment. Thanks. We'll, we'll make sure we note when he arrives. Um, and then also wanted to announce that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. So everybody participating in this meeting is being audio and video recorded during this time. Um, the the Format. First, I'd like to say welcome to our, our guests from the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, we have a discussion with them. Um, what I'm going to do um, is go ahead and, and rearrange and um, approve the minutes um, of, from the August 29th meeting, and then we'll move into public comment. Otherwise, I think it'll feel kind of disjointed. Um, so our next order is, brings us to item four on the agenda, the minutes of previous meetings. That's the minutes of the August 29th. 2023 meeting. Is there a motion for those? Make the motion. Second. Okay. So a uh, motion to approve, Councillor? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, so motion made by Councillor Labarge and seconded by Councillor Gore. Uh, Laura, would you take any discussion on the approval of the minutes? Okay. Laura, would you take a roll call, please? Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, so that passes three to zero, thank you. Um, so next up, we have a roundtable discussion um, with the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, we have Director Karalipa here. Um, we have uh, the chair of the um, commission, um, Maureen Carney is here, as well as I see other members um, of the commission as well. I'm glad you're here. Um, so just to sort of reiterate, um, the City Council Committee on City Services, our role in this discussion um, is that we have the authority to approve or not approve mayoral appointments to the commission. Um, and so this discussion is for our background and knowledge as a committee as um, we anticipate a couple of appointments moving forward. So this is to help us as a committee um, make um, decisions um, related to anticipated future appointments. Um, what I'm going to do is we always start our meetings with public comment. And um, I'm anticipating that most people are here in relation to the Housing Authority. Um, what we're going to do is I will take notes during public comment. So you, if you have a topic or a question you would like to see Director Leeper address during her presentation, um, you can go ahead and note that during your comment, and I will make a note. And during our follow-up discussion with Director Leeper, um, I'll ask those questions to make sure that that points um, have been addressed um, that people wanted to see addressed or information sought. Um, we will be limiting comments to three minutes just to make sure that everybody has a chance to speak and that we can get through the presentation um, and the meeting in a timely fashion. Um, and to do that, we have a, a timer, the blue sky timer. You can use that. Um, it's if you are viewing in gallery mode, um, the timer will show up and it will make a ding um, when three minutes are up and, and I'll ask you to wrap up your comments. Um, <clears throat> and if you would like to do that, you can use the reactions tab. Thank you. You can use the reactions tab um, to raise your virtual hand. I will also be looking um, for actual hands in the box. But if you'd like to make a comment, um, a public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, and I um, go in the order in which I see hands. So, um, all right, first up, we have Dr. Wait, sorry, let me get an order here. I need to pull up another window. Okay. First up, we have um, Dr. Bossy. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. Everyone, I'm Dr. Bossy. Uh, I've been. Oh, Dr. Bossy, I'm so sorry. I forgot to say this part, and I will interrupt you to say can you state your name and city or town of residence for the record? Sure. Um, all right. So, 
Um, I'm Jessica Bossy. I am the homeless medicine doctor for our county. Um, I live in Florence, uh, but I work throughout the Pioneer Valley um, in Hampshire County as well as all of Northampton. I'm just here to support the housing authority and give you a little background on some of the incredible accomplishments that we've made since I had the pleasure of colliding with Kara on a Thursday afternoon in 2021, where she reached out to one of the homeless shelters and appropriately pointed out that we were, you know, having trouble housing some of our longtime homeless populations. And um, at that moment in that space, uh, she identified sort of how to locate our longtime homeless whose contact information might not be consistent over the years when they initially applied for CHAMP and for their senior housing. I've been working with Jack and Kara um, sort of actively for the last three years on fixing sort of uh, holes in the process. And Kara has been an absolute advocate in ensuring that all people in our region get housed, including our houseless, our, our you know, mentally ill, our medically ill, and then expanding the housing authority to include other regions in which I practice, which is East Hampton and the Hill Towns. Um, I have been so impressed by the dedication of our Northampton Housing Authority, especially in comparison with other authorities that I work with. Um, I think in, it's I know for a fact, it's a really difficult job that they have, and I respect how dedicated they are in housing preservation, which we have also done um, a lot of work with um, to the housing authority for folks who may enter homelessness because they're struggling with um, either medical illness or mental illness. Um, that said, I want to just be really clear that we are like mid-momentum. We did all of this during the pandemic, and um, we are continuing to just like rock it forward. Um, I have seen some degeneration um, or degradation in the board meetings recently and um, a lot of stress on the housing authority as a um, consequence of that. I would like to just encourage the committee, uh, this committee particularly, to ensure that they are really vetting uh, potential candidates for the board and ensure that there's no history of personal vendettas, of litigious behaviors, and other, you know, sort of toxic qualities that a board member might carry into the role as obviously being on the board of the housing authority, you know, the interest is in being collaborative. Um, so I appreciate you allowing me to speak today and I thank you. Covered myself with the what I needed. Thank you, Dr. Boss. I appreciate that. Um, okay, that is going to bring us to Marilyn Richards. I'm going to ask you to unmute. There we go. <laughs> thank you, Marilyn Richards. I live in Florence, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to uh, participate in public comment concerning the involvement with the Northampton Housing Authority. I have been a, a NHA commissioner for the past six years, before that on planning board for several years, and a city councilor for two, ter two terms before moving to Bear Hill and proudly the co-chair of the Senior Center Building Committee. I have very much enjoyed being a commissioner on the Northampton Housing Authority and feel that we have accomplished much during my time on the board. Most recently, I'm sure you all have read in the papers about the $3 million grant that we were just receiving to improve conditions for residents of Salville and the Cahill through energy improvements. During my time on the board, the executive director has led the organization successfully through the worst of COVID, working with the Northampton Board of Health, Grow Food Northampton, just to name a few, to provide the residents with a safe and healthy environment. I am delighted that you are taking time 
to gain a better understanding of the Northampton Housing Authority. As you may know, as a quasi semi uh, uh, city board, the NHA is highly regulated by HUD, federal, and DHCD state, and works directly and carefully within those constraints and guidelines. Uh, today, you will have the opportunity to hear the exemplary data and meet the director, uh, Kara Leeper, and the chair, uh, Commissioner um, uh, Maureen Carney, to learn more about the work that we all do on behalf of the residents. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Okay. And that's going to bring us up next um, to Councillor Nash. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I can't seem to change my screen name. So oh, I just changed it for you. Oh, you did. Thank you. Okay. Full service here, Councilor. Okay. I'm now on the other end of this. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hi, everybody. My name is Jim Nash. I am the Ward 3 um, uh, City Councilor. Um, and I, you know, to the members of the NHA board, I know all of you personally. I know your dedication. I've worked with all of you, and I appreciate all of your, your work. And that includes uh, Kara as well, um, that we've all collaborated on a lot of different things. Um, and I, I just want to start with that. I do have, um, and, and as uh, you guys are speaking tonight, I have a number of things that I would like to hear uh, touched upon. So first and foremost, uh, tenant voices and efforts to promote tenant organizations for uh, residents of the NHA. I, I, I've, you know, over the last six, seven years, I haven't seen a lot of progress on that. And I would, I would like to see um, uh, steps uh, made in that area. Um, I'd like to hear about efforts to improve customer service. I know this is very difficult with the with the um, the folks that uh, live in uh, the 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 housing authority buildings. Uh, a lot of people don't have internet. Um, they may have uh, limited phone uh, resources. That it, it's hard to put together an effective system. And I but I'm interested in hearing about efforts around that. Um, I also in the. I perhaps the biggest thing is I'd like to hear what we're doing in terms of funding for upgrading, rehabbing, and possibly even building new structures. I think that much of the concerns that that I've heard from residents over the years really has to do the, with the fact that we're dealing with really old buildings and old systems, and that the you know Jack and his crew are out repairing things that have already been repaired like three or four times over. And that um, that how can we get to a place to like where we have structures that are similar to what's gone in, you know, for example, the lumber yard, live 155. I when you have new structures, the 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 complaints go way down and people are much more satisfied about where they live. And I know you guys got to deal with that. Um, with with these older structures. The last thing, and and Dr. Bossy touched upon this, is you know efforts that um, that the board and and that we can all do to rebuild trust here. That um, that there's there's a there's everybody's not trusting somebody, and that uh, the collaboration needs to be rebuilt. And um, and I look forward to hearing ways to do that. Maybe a consultant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> you made it. All right. And that brings us up next to um, KC. I'm going to send you a message to unmute. Hi, my name's Mary Chapman. I'm a tenant of not quite five years, McDonald House, which is where the offices are as well. Um, I, I really enjoyed reading what uh, y'all were talking about equity and inclusion and diversity. And I think those are very important things. I, I think a lot of us feel that we're judged because we're old, we're disabled, we're this or that. Truth is, I've been here, like I say, just under five years. 
I work as a consultant, as an advisor with Grow Food Northampton and with the Hampshire County Food Policy Council. I don't think that the authority realizes that a lot of us had lives before we ended up here. So I think that oftentimes, like if you're like in a position of power, an authority figure, your charges will emulate your behavior. And, you know, like if you're a kid and the teacher's cool, you're going to try and write like the teacher like that. Um, I don't we feel as tenants, I can tell you right now, we feel like they lead with punitive measures. They lead with threats instead of saying, how can I help you with this? I mean, it's just easier to say, how can I help instead of saying do this or else or and then doing things, you know, out of line. I have a hearing this week, a grievance hearing, finally after asking for one for quite a while. And I'm very interested to see how that comes out. Um, but as, as workers, we're all workers. I mean, regardless, we're all students, we're all workers. And we really do need to come together on this. I have extensive training in organizing. And the thing is, people here, they see the authority acting mean to them. They're gonna act mean to, to me, to you, to everyone. So that's very uncomfortable for all of us um i just um i just feel like the way that say, say here's an analogy or metaphor whatever if you if we're boxers in a ring right and you put me over you get me in the corner and i'll say enough and you keep hitting that's i think how we feel a lot of times so i just i really hope that they can get some more training. I would love to see them have that, for instance, the training that I've had, that other people have had that aren't even on this board. I just, um, and the mold and the buildings, and it's just unhealthy. In my in my apartment, it's, you know, we have central heat and they've turned the heat on. I know it's mostly old people, old people get cold. I'm an old person that doesn't get cold. So it's very hot in here. So I'm still running the air. The AC, this is wasteful, y'all. It's wasteful. So. That, that's about it. And I, I'm glad that we're coming together on this because we do a lot more together than we do fussing and fighting and bickering. And that's about it. Thank you for listening. Good to see everybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's going to bring us up next to Lee Anderson. Ask you to unmute. Muted. Do you, have a, mute. do you have a little message they're asking you? Great. So I'm Lee from Manic Community Kitchen, and I'm attending today to just voice my support of CARA and some experiences I've had working with Northampton Housing. So, you know, at MANA, we work with some of, you know, very vulnerable population. And through the relationship with CARA and her team, we have found her to be um, extremely generous and compassionate with people that um, don't often find that. Um, so it's um, I, very interesting thing. So today I was talking to a team member about you know coming to this meeting today to support Kara and Northampton Housing's work towards housing people. And a volunteer that had been volunteering with me for years and years heard the name and almost started to cry and said that 20 years ago, Carrie used to take care of um, her, a family member that was a paraplegic and said, I've never met a nicer person. And that sort of hit me as, you know, 20 years into the future, my experience with Kara and her team, if you want to say a team emulates a leader, um, is the same thing. So, you know, you can't, I don't think you can take two experiences of people spanning 20 years and say that, that that's not in that person's core. Um, Kara has enabled us to bring candidates to housing that maybe never would have had that. Um, you know, extra diligence, you know, there are rules around, you know, the process and the application process. And when it comes up, when a, tick, a timer is ticking, like Carol will reach out and say, this is going to end. This time is going to end. Can you find this person and get them to finish what I need for them? And I, I've never experienced somebody. Most times, if the timer runs out on somebody, it's their fault. It just runs out. And, and 
Northampton Housing, and actually the city of Northampton, the, the, the mayor's office too. I find the city of Northampton is a wonderful place for me to do the work that we're doing here, feeding, supporting, shepherding the most vulnerable people in our community. And um, I, I find Northampton Housing to be, you know, as open and accepting and being able to do the work to give people a chance to succeed. And I just want to say thank you. And, you know, I, I appreciate being in Northampton. The people that are here are making my work easier. Thank you, Lee. Um, that's going to bring us up to uh, Edgardo Cancel. I'm going to send you a note to unmute. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My name Hello is Edgardo Cancel. Um, I also go by Edgar. I grew up here in Northampton, uh, was a um, public housing resident as a kid and also as an adult. Um, and um, I also serve on the Northampton Housing Partnership. Uh, in fact, that's um, how I uh, landed on the board authority, on the board of the Housing Authority um, as a representative for the Housing Partnership um, once the uh, uh, most recent legislation was passed to add more um, tenant involvement on the board. Um, and um, uh, first of all, I want to preface my comments by uh, saying that uh, as a board, we've been doing a lot of training lately, um, which is really, really encouraging, um, uh, particularly when we see our chair there um, at every single training, which to me um, shows uh, leadership, shows um, uh, wanting to see things change for the better and taking an active role. Uh, she didn't just send out all this information to all the board members and I think some staff member, but She's also attended every single training, uh, which to me, I just, I wanna commend her for that um, because that's exactly the, the direction that I think uh, we need to take as a board. Um, while there are, you know, things and many differences uh, that we have, um, as somebody mentioned earlier, I think it was uh, Casey, um, we do a lot more things together and well than we do bad. And so uh, we really, um, I want to encourage us as, a, as an organization um, to think about those things um, and um, uh, move forward in a way that is constructive and efficient, um, uh, like we know uh, how to do. Um, uh, but I do take exception uh, to uh, folks, you know, saying, oh, the city should vet, you know, each each member so they don't have personal vendettas. Listen, I don't have a personal vendetta against anyone on this board and especially against Kara. Kara and I have worked through a lot of differences. And before, even before I got on this board, we worked collaboratively, uh, collaboratively to uh, build a playground in, excuse me, Hampshire Heights, uh, to build gardens at Florence Heights, a lot of other different activities that we've done together. Um, and it's, it's sad that all these, these things get clouded by the things that we just haven't addressed as well. And so I have a lot more to say, um, but I'm, I see that I'm running out of time. Um, but I would like to see us focus, you know, moving forward, you know, seeking uh, ways to create more opportunities for tenant participation. You know, uh, as Councilman Nash mentioned, uh, us supporting uh, the creation of local tenant organizations um, uh, for us to meet regularly with the tenants um, and for us to encourage the resident uh, advisory board. Um, and lastly, I want to say thank you to this body uh, for getting us together and having this discussion, which I think is very important. Thank you, Edgar. Um, and that brings us up next to Joella. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hello, everyone. I'm coming to you today in an apartment. Oh, do you mind South just say, I know it's silly, name and city or town for the record. Thank All right. You. My name is Joella Carbon hyphen Springfield. I go by Jada. I'm a resident of uh, Board of Commissioner, and I'm also a resident of Walter Savo House. And I'm very excited about the uh, the grant. I went to a narrow convention 
a year ago and they had the vendors there. So I know about it then. And then I also went to a meeting at Belchertown Housing Authority and they had the vents there. And I also attended a, web, a webinar by the former DHC a division called Sustainability where they talked about mass saves and a resident even heard it on NPR. So um, this is good. Keep, I'll cheerlead the good things. But I also want to talk something here that, and I, I it, this is not enough time. I wish there was a committee to study all of this from at least the three years that I've been here. But I have to say a month before I came on, the executive director came into my apartment, talked about another uh, res, uh, commissioner, Consale, and told me he was evicted from one of our properties. And I was shocked. And then she saw my shocked face and said, oh, bro, I shouldn't have told you that. And then a month before, uh, no, two, uh, two days before the election of the uh, vice chair, chair, treasurer, you know, the one that vice, and the chair is very important. She called me up. I'll never forget it because it was right when they were talking about Trump when he needed 11,780 votes. She said, I need your assurance that you're going to vote for Maryland to be chair again and not Elizabeth uh, Silver, who's a mean old bully. I didn't know Elizabeth. Poor old Marilyn, she said, is so sweet. I'm afraid if she doesn't get the chair, she's going to quit. So, she said, do I have your assurance? I was shocked. So, the people who get along with her love her in that sense. I don't get along with her. I would like to see residents have an uh, LTO, to get their needs to be heard. And I don't think that that's happening. And I think I, myself, and Eduardo, the only two people of color, uh, on this board, and there was another one that you should interview who was on the board, have been treated really badly. As a matter of fact, I've had to block her from my phone calls, my emails, because I've gotten harassment, uh, gaslighting. It's been amazing. And when we've tried to, and actually, let me just say this specifically, when Kara called me that day, seconds later, Marilyn called me. And I was late for another meeting because I was shocked. And I tried to think of every way to get out of this. I want to serve, I want, I have an oath. I don't have an oath to Kara. I have an oath that I sign in City Hall to do my job. And I think that in some ways I feel like I am a colorful addendum. I'm not that. I want to, my job is to oversight. I want to know when you go over to East Hampton and make a deal, why isn't the board a part of that? Not a management team that consists of the chair and the, um, uh, so, so there's a lot of problems and I'm begging you to look through this. And if I'm being loud and people don't like my decorum, I'm not always honey tongue, but I am calling on the issues and I have a respect for everybody. And I just want to be treated that way. And I also want to say nobody should have any staff walking their dog. All right. Thank you, Joella. Okay. And that brings us up to I know that you are not Lee Anderson, but we see Mana here, so I'm going to ask you to unmute as well. Is that coming up or no? Yeah, you should. You're oh. unmuted now. Yep. Um, I'm Pastor Dawn Orleski. I'm a pastor at Cathedral in the Night, and I work here at Mana also. Um, I live in Montague. Um, I moved during the pandemic. Um, I'm here um, today to speak to my um, interactions with Kara um, around the people that I serve, both at Mana and Cathedral in the Night. Um, people often ask me as a minister uh, what kind of hours I work. And I say, I definitely don't work an eight to five job. Um, my work um, sometimes is in the middle of the night. Sometimes it's very early weekends. Um, and consistently, that has how I have encountered Kara. Um, Kara has taken my calls when she's been homesick, um, on weekends, um, times when she's been with her family, when I have been trying to get somebody housed that is um, having a difficult time with mental health issues, substance use disorder, um, and they're just fragile. Um, she has always been incredibly hardworking and diligent and um, has come through for us in so many ways um, to try and help stabilize people and give them a roof over their head. Um, 
I've only encountered her, you know, through Northampton housing the last probably year and a half. Um, but I feel like she's fought and sought out ways to um, reach people that are on the margins of the margins. And so I just wanted to um, speak on her behalf today um, as a pastor and as someone who works at MANA and, and sees a lot of the most vulnerable people in our city. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Okay, I don't see other hands raised, but I'm gonna wait a minute because public comment is going once, going twice. I'm sorry, Joella, we just do one uh, at these meetings, so just one turn. Um, but if there's anybody that has not yet had a chance to speak, um, this is the public comment session of this meeting. Okay, then we are going to move on. Public comment is now closed. Um, and that brings us up to item five, which is the roundtable discussion on topics related to public housing. Um, Director Leeper, we had sent you from counselors um, a lengthy list of questions that we had, and I know that you plan to address them um, in your presentation. And so the format will be, you know, the, the floor is yours. Um, I don't know if you want to screen share. Um, oh, here, you can unmute your co-host. Sorry about that. So um, I just printed the document uh, that you sent, yep. if it's all right with you, um, if yep. I could state your question and, and how the response is, it might be a good flow if that's all right with you. But it Yeah, is that works. That was, that was the counselor question. So after you have a chance to present, um, I wrote down six questions, comments people had that they'd love to hear you address. So um, I'll follow up with you on those. And then we'll open the floor to other counselors um, and Counselor Perry will be joining us um, at some point as we're underway. All right, perfect, thank you. Um, the first question I got was um, examples of some of the state and federal regulations that we're bound to follow um, and how that could impact uh, residents. So residents and applicants must income qualify based upon regulations surrounding the program that which they're applying for calculation of rent upon move in and then both annually if the or if there's a change in household or composition of income. Um, what's the vacancy rate at the NHA properties in 2022 we turned over 72 units and we average approximately 3% vacancy rate. The process, what is the process for filling out a vacancy when one occurs? That depends on what the program is. We run a lot of different programs here. So our state physical units, which are filled by pulling lists from the state CHAMP common housing application for Massachusetts programs, based on the type of unit that's going to be available, sending out the required forms and waiting 10 days for responses. For all of those that respond, we then need to show the unit, gather the income assets, expenses, information via third party, obtain birth certificates, social security cards for everyone in the household and run background screenings. For the feder federal physical units, these are filled by going through the wait list that we hold and con contacting the applicants in order of date and time applied. We then show the unit, gather the income asset and expense information via third party and obtain birth certificate, social security card for everyone in the house, uh, household and run background checks. For the Section 8 programs, there are many different programs, and it's dependent upon the program with which the voucher is, which determines the agency that we work with for the specific list that we pull from, or if we issue a voucher, um, uh, you know, we would once we issue the voucher, we would then gather income, asset, and expense information um, via third party, obtain birth certificate and social security card uh, for anyone in the household, run background checks on everyone that is um, 18 years of age or older, and run a quarry. Uh, we then schedule an HQS inspection with the landlord of the property. Once the unit passes this inspection, we then allow the landlord to execute a lease with the person, and we let the landlord know how much of the rent is the resident's responsibility versus how much we would be paying on their behalf. What type of tenant screening does the NHA do? We run a background check based upon what information is put on the application and provided by the applicant. We run a quarry, criminal credit, and evictions, in addition to checking the sex offender registry boards. Please note that if a person does not give the correct information, for example, they're in a domestic violence shelter in Northampton, but lived in Boston for years, and they were evicted from any place they had lived previously, 
we may not get that information. Also, if a person has changed their name, it would affect those results. How are people eligible to join the wait list for housing? And what are the factors that can move them higher or lower on the list? Anyone is eligible to apply to any of the physical housing units state via of the state via the CHAMP website and federal by submitting an application. There are preference points given to those who live in North or work in Northampton and preference for those who are currently homeless or at risk of becoming homeless too. As the city looks to fill upcoming vacancies on the board, what types of qualities and skill sets and candidates are you hoping to see as appointments are brought forth? For us, it would be nice to have someone familiar with Robert's rules and someone that knows how to read financials too. But most importantly for us, not anyone who has had a litigious history with us as it is presented to be a problem. Is there a formal onboarding process for new members of the NHA board? Before me, I'm not sure how it worked, but several years ago, I developed a new commissioner orientation. Each new commissioner meets with me. We complete the new hire paperwork to onboard them as an employee. And since we run a 200 program, each individual commissioner receives a stipend from us. I then go over each of the below items with them and give them an onboarding package that contains a brochure with all pertinent information, what our mission statement is, who's on the board, contact numbers, and required trainings, the required trainings that must be done within 30 days of appointment to the board and repeated every two years are the HUD's ethics training done online and the DHCD mandatory board member training. The items that I go over with them and provide them with copies of are the current bylaws, the open meeting law guide, the latest approved budget, the latest financials, the last approved audit, the DHCD board member training manual for state housing only, NARO's handbook for commissioners for the federal housing, Robert's rules for dummies, latest edition, right now it's on the third edition, the last annual report, DHCD step-by-step -step guide for manual, uh, mandatory training. <coughs> how many properties does NHA manage? Approximately how many apartments and tenants? So the agency administers 16 total programs to provide quality, affordable rental housing opportunities. This occurs with the physical properties and many voucher programs. The agency works with the COC Veterans Administration to, for VASH vouchers. And currently the Northampton Housing Authority serves the community with a public housing portfolio, which is 619 physical units of both state and federal, federally funded housing, over 13 properties. This program currently serves 855 people of which 183 are children, 297 are disabled individuals and 366 of them are elderly. The many federal voucher programs, which include Section 8 Housing Choice Vouchers, VASH Vouchers, COC VASH Vouchers, Emergency Housing Vouchers, Project-Based VASH Vouchers, Project-Based Preservation Vouchers, and Mainstream Vouchers. In these programs, we serve over 1,230 people, of which 268 are children, 369 are elderly, and 515 are disabled. We also serve almost 800 landlords. Can you describe the relationship, if any, between the NHA and other housing providers? For example, Dr. Bossy, Housing on Franklin, the Community Builders, Valley CDC. I have worked in collaboration with Dr. Bossy in getting the property on Franklin Street online by quickly, less than 48 hours, getting her an HQS HUD inspection so that HUD would allow them to move forward with occupancy. I worked with Dr. Bossy in many initiatives to locate individuals who were on the champ list, but homeless, not having access to phone numbers, mailing addresses or email addresses that they originally put on the application. Therefore, they would remain homeless. Over a 60 day period last year, we were able to literally pound the pavement with this collaboration and house almost 70 individuals or families. I offered to assist with vouchers with the new project going up behind City Hall. I work closely with MANA to help both residents and applicants when dealing with paperwork or specific challenges that those that are experiencing homelessness face. What is the process for setting the agenda for housing authority meetings? 
The purpose of the agenda is to address business of the board. The chairperson sets the agenda in consultation with the executive director and other commissioners. It's the chair's prerogative to determine if any agenda item request is appropriate for board business. The ED reviews the state and federal regulation and advises the chair as to the agenda items that are necessary and that must be on the agenda com to comply with the agency's fiscal cycle and meet state and or federal deadlines. What do you consider to be appropriate subjects for the agenda as opposed to topics that are more appropriate for public comment, not necessarily policy matters for board members to consider? This question, Madam Chair, I would like to defer to our chair, but in my opinion, it should be only business of the board or policy related as noted in my previous answer. What are the board's practices and rules around public comment, i.e., are there time limits, individual speakers, and overall time? Must speakers be residents of housing authority properties, Northampton residents? Must comments be related to topics on the agenda? And may the public speak on any matters they want? We have three comment periods uh, at most meetings. The resident comment period, we ask that the resident identify where they live. Um, so that we're able to later address any issue that they bring forward. Staff comment, any staff member may comment. And public comment, anyone not in the two above categories are welcome to speak. During each segment, individuals are called upon and each are given three minutes to speak about whatever they would like. The board does not engage or comment, but rather has me document what's stated and ask that I include in the following month's reports the resolutions to each issue. We do ask that comment time is respectful and that any resident comments are respectful to the confidentiality of each resident. Tell us about significant accomplishments over the last nine years. When I arrived here nine years ago, I determined that the authority's software and IT systems were not in compliance with the required laws around retainage of information, documents, and privacy. I updated the entire system to ensure compliance with the laws and regulations and improved efficiency. The authority was unnecessarily spending over $25,000 annually for rent and overhead of office space across the street for the Section 8 department. I properly terminated this lease and the main offices were clean, re cleaned, reconfigured, and this department has now been moved back to the McDonald House. The overhead savings were immediate and the rental savings began the following year. In an effort to ensure proper budget expenditures, I developed and implemented a proper, proper purchase order and purchasing system and trained staff on its process. I have implemented procedures whereby purchasing and payables are checked at three levels to ensure proper use of our funds. I have instructed the finance department on the importance of carefully reviewing the financials and the payables before payment, and have further instructed the finance department on variance reports catching mistakes in coding and adhering to budgetary requ requirements and guidelines. I installed a fire rated safe vault uh, to safely maintain specific documents such as board minutes, original documentation and checks, petty cash and all coinage from the laundry machines are also housed there. Prior, they were put in a filing cabinet. Um, to ensure compliance with uh, federal FLSA and state labor laws, I identified and correct employees who were uh, improperly categorized as exempt or salaried. As I, I also implemented a new payroll process and timesheet documentation to appropriately track time worked and leave taken to ensure proper and accurate, accurate record keeping. I then went so far as to install biometric time clocks at all the sites to maximize team member time instead of coming to the main office to punch in. These time clocks are integrated into the software that pulls the information remotely so that we're not having to go site to site to get the information. I worked diligently with the Northampton Police Department to identify and greatly reduce the drug and or criminal activity, including a drug bust that netted over 800 bags of heroin, which at the time was the largest heroin bust that Northampton had ever had. I helped to raise the authority's standards and performance by training, organizing, and leading by example, which has created a sense of pride among the staff with a team approach to the authority through my leadership. I feel that my accomplishments have brought about a level of confidence and trust with staff and residents alike. 
When I became the executive director of the agency, one of my goals was to create an atmosphere among employees that allowed a team spirit and a feeling of family. I do believe that this team is what is going to make our agency outshine all others. I'm gladly willing to hear employees and residents by maintaining an open door policy, and I try to bring individual attention and solutions to any issues brought to my attention. I have not been afraid to utilize or recommend progressive discipline as a method of changing behaviors from some employees who have needed it, and I realize that this necessary long-term change in attitudes among some staff does not come without setbacks. Although it's been, it has at times been frustrating to raise expectations for staff and change poor attitudes and work practices, I try very hard in these efforts, including working alongside the staff with a solid degree of professionalism, peppered with some humor and lightheartedness, which is essential in this industry. I've made the most of opportunities to meet and interact with residents and hope to do more so as time goes on. I have demonstrated my people skills and willingness to help satisfy customers while maintaining the authority's interests. I have explained the agency's authority, the authority's policies and procedures to employees and residents alike. I have also been able to take a fresh approach to thinking through how best to make improvements to processes, procedures, and overall management at the agency. I have worked diligently with the Northampton Police Department to identify and greatly reduce drug and or criminal activity. I have also shifted staff into appropriate teams and areas to address particular jobs in the authority in an effort to maximize our efficiency by opening satellite offices at the each site and assigning staff, both maintenance and administrative, directly to specific properties. This has greatly en enhanced resident accessibility to our staff and allows staff to provide better customer service. I also realize that our needs change as issues arise and have been able to effectively address immediate problems without unneeded panic or worry. We implemented a Go Green initiative, uh, changing everything to electronic rather than paper, uh, created, designed, and implementation of a website service department continuity and best, best, better customer service. We increased the curb appeal at all of the sites. We've we have obtained addition, hundreds of additional vouchers. Worked diligently with HUD to get a waiver to help potentially ineligible veterans obtain housing, and it was approved within the last 60 days. Implemented mobile inspections with our Section 8 program, which integrates into our software from the field, thus saving time from double entry of inspections. Significantly increased the overall e-capability at the agency, including items such as implementing electronic rent payment for residents, electronic filing, electronic payments to vendors, and electronic payments to landlords. We secured $95,000 in CBDG funding for our Cahill and single family homes to get some handicapped showers and ramps into the buildings. We secured $150,000 in CDBG funding for a new playground at Hampshire Heights. Through the capital improvement plan, I completed the Tobin roof replacement, Hampshire Heights roof replacement, and the Hampshire Heights hot water tank replacement, implemented a brand new resident services program for the family sites, and for a separate program for the elderly disabled sites, streamlined the board meeting process and set up, emergency replacement of the Tobin hot water heater system, and replacement of the boiler and hot waters heaters in all of the buildings at Cahill. Completed phase one of a three-phase capital plan for stove replacement at Salvo. Although we are currently experiencing some issues with the phase two of this program based upon a new state regulation on code, we're working with the state to resolve that as well. At the request of the state, we took over and uh, via a management contract of the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority in Cummington and Huntington as their board wanted to dissolve. Without us doing so, the residents wouldn't have had anybody to call in work orders to or to turn the units or to process any of their needs. Um, also, at the request of the state, we took over the management of the East Hampton Housing Authority. Um, through a management agreement to sustain housing for residents of our neighboring communities. Without us stepping up and taking on these two agencies, um, and I'd like to just clarify that 
each of those agencies has their own uh, employees. So the only involvement of our board is to determine whether we're going to enter into a management agreement, and then we have to manage those agencies. It's separate from Northampton. It doesn't take away anything from the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, the Northampton Housing Authority does get a management fee for it. Um, and it does increase not only my salary, but anybody else's salary that is um, assisting in that um, area as well. Um, but again, had we not taken on these agencies, you would have had over 250 elderly disabled families um, with no one to answer their emergency work order calls. Um, we purchased and provided training for MySafe 911 here at McDonald House. Since the building was um, old and antiquated, the uh, emergency pull uh, switches, which when they pulled a switch, it lit up a light outside of their door, um, but didn't notify any um, outside agencies, no 911, of none of that. Uh, so we purchased uh, what's called MySafe 911, um, and it can go anywhere that the resident goes. So not just in their apartment, but on their safety, on their person for safety. Um, and um, it, when they press a button, opens a line to 911 and they can communicate. They don't have to have a cell phone. They don't have to have any of that. That's been um, a great hit here as well. Uh, during the pandemic, we facilitated more than 5,000 meals delivered to residents' doors by staff and provided PPE care package, which in, packages, which included COVID tests, gloves, masks, disinfecting wipes to every household. And we collaborated with the um, NHD to host many COVID vaccine and booster clinics at all of the properties, implemented a resident coordination program for the uh, elderly and disabled sites, I think I said that already, uh, brought in a podiatrist to provide on-site services to residents on a monthly basis and brought all audits, public management reviews, real estate assessment center and HUD reviews to near perfect scoring in all areas over the nine years that I've been here. Additionally, I polled the staff anonymously to encourage honest feedback and to help with my own growth. I give each staff member a form for them to anonymously complete regarding their perception of my management. I do this to help me better, to be help me be a better manager to my staff. 10 of them were put into the box and the overall rating came out as a 9.30 out of 10. Here's a list of some of the opinions of my leadership. Positive, strong, experienced, a more professional agency, morale has improved, feels like part of a team, gives support, cares for people, hardworking and honest, dedicated, organized, excellent at problem solving, tells it like it is, has an open door policy, creates a positive work environment, moved to section eight, always available for questions or advice. But here's some of the recommendations that they had. That I need to delegate more, that I overthink things and I overwork, that I need to meet with the agency people to introduce myself and increase outside relationships that I need to conduct more staff meetings. They said that I'm also positive, experienced, and that I have created a more professional agency. Um, that I, uh, I just found where I typed up the thing twice, so I apologize for that. Um, I do work on those things. Um, that's a lot of accomplishments. In addition to um, securing $2.8 million for Salvo, which we uh, just announced on Friday, um, and over half a million dollars for Cahill. Uh, I further intend to apply uh, for more grants through the Lean Program and Mass Save um, for all of the properties that we uh, oversee, uh, including the ones that we manage. Um, can you tell us more about the difference between board members' role and the executive director's role? Both the state and the federal regulations are clear about the differences and the partnership of the board versus the executive director. The board is responsible for approving the business brought before them, setting policy and working with and supporting the executive director while protecting the reputation of the agency. The executive director is responsible for all day-to-day -day operations, implementation of policy, assuring compliance with state and federal regulations, which are many, and reporting to the board, 
state and federal officials, and additionally, effectively managing all personnel items for a staff of over 50. You provided some interesting, an interesting list of housing authority regulations and that they were part of state law. Yes, we're governed by the laws under 760 CMR, Mass General Law 121B, 30B, the Open Meeting Law, and the Ethics Law, in addition to CFR 24. Do NHA commissioners have a diversity, equity, and inclusion training or trainings related to working with people in public housing? The senior staff attended DEI training from March 1st to April 26th. All staff attended a training series on racism, diversity, equity, inclusion, and cultural sensitivity from September 22nd, 22 through October 20th of 22. We provided financials and budget training done for board members on August 14th, 19, February 24th of 22, September 13th of 23, and DEI training was sent to the board on August 24th, 23. The state also sent board members training on May 30th of 23 and June 21st of 23. The board uh, had training on open meeting law and board decorum and, uh, and housing authorities and board uh, responsibilities on December 17th of 22. And we have another one scheduled for this week, October 4th of 23. Are there any trainings that commissioners uh, attend? They are required to attend the federal and state trainings within 30 days and every two years. However, um, there are many, many trainings offered um, for free, and most of them are online or via Zoom through uh, what is formerly DHCD is now the EOHLC. Um, we, uh, how does the NHA board address issues around diversity, equity, and inclusion? Our board members and our staff spend time listening and engaging in open discussions about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have spent time working diligently to understand both historical and current disparities, injustices, and inequities related to our mission, community, and those that we serve in addition to training around these matters. And Madam Chair, if I remember correctly, um, one of the questions, um, around, uh, I believe it was for, from Councillor Nash, was about resident associations. Um, and so I wanted to say, um, August 31st, uh, we sent out a survey um, to every single household um, asking if they're at every property. So 619 uh, surveys went out um, asking if people would be interested in uh, creating a tenants association. Um, I have been working with um, a couple of residents at Hampshire Heights uh, th that are interested in forming a tenants association. Uh, we have a tenants association at Fort Sander already. Um, it's my understanding that Madam Mayor had reached out to them about appointments and that they didn't respond. Uh, we often find that that's the case um, because they think it's more of a social thing. Um, but we also printed out the 760 CMR 609, which regulates for the state properties anyway, um, how to uh, form a tenants association. Um, we would love to have tenants associations that are functioning um, and, and have been working with some residents. Salvo went um, kind of off on their own uh, to create one with a mass union um, I, I think that Mass Union creates more work than is necessary to create a tenants association, uh, but uh, they did not want our involvement. Um, some residents did and some didn't. And so I just kind of went with what they were looking at um, as a whole, you know, on a whole, um, so that I wasn't overstepping the bounds. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember his other questions. So if you want to let me know, I'll try to do my best. Yeah, got you. I've got, I've got them here in order. So um, thank you for, for addressing the first one about tenant voices and, and work to bring um, tenant voices forward. Um, the next one, and you did touch on it, but I just wanted to highlight because it was a question we heard at the beginning, was um, some of the efforts to improve customer service. And you had included that along with a broader list um, of changes that have you've brought to the agency. Um, but if you could address more specifically 
kind of work to address to work with residents specifically yeah. on on maintenance requests and repairs and that sort sure. of thing. So um, for me, um, and and it starts at the top down, right? Um, I. I, I find customer service to be very important uh, because without our residents, um, you know, the residents are, are the customer and without the residents, none of us have jobs. And so the staff knows that they should be getting back to people within 24 hours, um, work orders. Uh, the state puts a, a, a timeline on how to handle work orders and what they come, you know, how they come in and how they're categorized. Um, but certainly customer service is is very important um you know unfortunately there are times when um uh we're not always able to say yes to the person um and so um just because we say no doesn't mean we're not providing good customer service it's just that maybe the requested item isn't reasonable um and i'm not saying every request is is reasonable that's very far and few between, there is a grievance process. Um, uh, what I like to do is they fill out a form, uh, they turn it into their property manager, the property manager then uh, tries to resolve their issue. If the property manager doesn't resolve their issue, the senior property manager would meet with them. Um, and then if they're not able to reach it, uh, a, a, a common ground with Jack, that's where I then step in and I'm able to resolve most issues. Um, I think during my tenure here, we've had less than a handful of grievances because I'm able to resolve most things. Um, but in the event that uh, there is a grievance requested, once we know what the grievance is about, um, then I would schedule that uh, with the grievance. And the, the grievance panel is made up of um, uh, uh, two board members um, and one outside person um, that's an unbiased person um, to the situation. And um, uh, we do have one scheduled for this week as well. Um, customer service, part of that was we were getting a lot of residents uh, who you know, aren't able to go out and get a money order to pay their rent, don't have a bank account. So Part of that customer service was getting um, the rent pay system up and going, which was a huge feat in and of itself. Um, so that people could, you know, take cash to the local CVS, or they could go down to the office with their card and and pay, or um, you know, many many different um, solutions for their uh, options to pay rent. Um, we're working on going green with the resident recertification process, which would um, allow residents to come in and use a pad to sign everything rather than have a form that they sign and papers that they have to fill out. They would do it electronically. Um, but I think a really important thing that we provide with the customer service is, is we do a lot of referrals to um, legal aid um, Tom and I work and Jack work very closely with them um, because, you know, we're not in the business of unhousing people. We're, you know, here to house people. And so oftentimes we get in situations or residents get into situations where they've gotten for some reason behind on their rent or they're having issues with, um, you know, noncompliance of lease. And, you know, we actually will refer them over to legal aid so that they can get some help or some out, you know, some outside help um, to pre preserve their housing. And, um, you know, Tom likes to call it me being soft in my old age, but, you know, why are we going to add to the homeless population if we can avoid it at any cost? So it seems, um, you know, we had to think outside of the box. We recently had um, a bed bug out, outbreak um, at one of the properties. And, you know, we had uh, an 85 year old man who had had a heart attack. Um, you know, residents are responsible for prepping their own units. It's an extensive, although we do a heat prep, it's an extensive prep anyway, because anything that would be affected by the heat has to be put in the refrigerator or prepared in a certain way. And so, you know, we were able to think outside of the box and get 
a cleaning company that was willing to come in, suit up, um, and, and, you know, although very expensive, you know, uh, charge us, which we paid up front, and we'll then bill residents back uh, in an amount that they can afford, uh, because we don't want a, a, an epidemic. Um, so I think that um, it's, you know, it's about caring about people, and it's about um, getting also the job done. Did I answer the question? Jeez. <laughs> I have like I, a light, you know, the big light that's on me. <laughs> I think you did. But um, if other counselors want more information as they have a chance, um, you know, we'll, we'll have a chance to ask you more. Council LaBarge, I have five more questions that were asked during public comment, and then we'll open it up for, for all of us to follow up. Okay. Um, so the next one, this one was um, for... Um, also from Councilor Nash, asking about um, if there are funding sources or if you've sought grant funding for upgrading, rehabbing, and or building um, new structures. So we have um, a, a five-year capital plan, uh, capital improvement plan, which, uh, you know, state funds, and um, we have many projects on that plan. Um, you know, the thing I think that it's hard for people to understand is when the state is funding something, they kind of control the timeline, um, which for us is very frustrating, especially for me, it's very frustrating because I come, I had originally come from the private sector where, you know, money talks. And so you can get stuff done, boom, boom, boom. Um, and um, that's not always the case. Uh, for example, um, at, the um, Hampshire Heights, I don't, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with Hampshire Heights. Um, so with Hampshire Heights, um, they've had a water issue in the basements there um, for more than 30 years. And it's part of, part of the lease um, that they're not supposed to put anything in the basements. They're not, because it's, and that was done so that they could still provide housing for people. Um, it just didn't include a basement. Um, and so it is part of the lease uh, that they're not supposed to utilize that basement, but we have over $2 million worth of capital projects um, to help with the reconfiguration of the grounds, reconfiguration of the parking and the drainage and the window well removal and window replacement, um, but we're on their timeline. And so unfortunately, what that feels like for some people, I think is that it's never gonna happen but really it is, it's just on their timeline. They're funding it. So, you know, they kind of have us handcuffed, even though we're, I'm the squeakiest wheel they've probably ever heard. I'm surprised that they support us because I am such a squeaky wheel with them. Uh, but anyhow, um, um, that's what we do with that. And I'm pulling up a list right now of the current state projects. Um, so the current, they call it FISH. Um, and so the current fish projects, uh, bear with me here just a minute. Um, we had, we've done um, Bridge Street at, flo flooring at Bridge Street. We completely replaced all of that. Um, Salvo has stove replacement in a three-phase process. The Hampshire Heights roofs were replaced. Um, Hampshire Heights hot water tanks were replaced. The Cahill, um, Originally, we had a project that was um, asphalt at Hampshire Heights and asphalt at uh, Cahill. Um, but because that asphalt um, tied into the drainage issues and the resurfacing of everything, they, we were able to get DHCD to break apart those capital projects um, and give Cahill kind of its own because Hampshire Heights was going to take so long. Um, security cameras, um, the roof replaced at Tobin, uh, window replacements and uh, basement water mitigation at Hampshire Heights. We did key fobs at Salvo. Um, we did, um, we have window replacement coming up at Hampshire Heights. Um, boiler and hot water heaters were all just replaced at Cahill. Um, and then we have window replacement at Hampshire Heights. 
That's just the state units, um, but we also have uh, stuff going on at the federal units. And anytime, um, uh, anytime anybody would like to meet with me to look over those projects, I'm happy to sit down and talk about it. It's exciting because we're doing so much. Um, so I hope that answered that one. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then the next one, um, this is uh, Councillor Nash's last question, was efforts that the Housing Authority may be undertaking to rebuild trust. Like clearly, um, you know, there's some, some challenges there. Um, and I've heard you talk about the training that the commission is doing, and I'm wondering what other efforts um, are underway. Well, so we did, um, we did um, discuss with some local agencies um, some items on doing some training. Um, but I, I just couldn't justify spending $5,000 of our budget to try to build trust. So I thought that this, you know, in talking with um, the chair, um, you know, this, this training and board decorum uh, training that we have this week, I'm hoping we'll be able to deal with some uh, trust issues there. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that, um, you know, there's just some things that you, you're not going to be able to repair. And, you know, I'm just uh, doing my best to, you know, get the hundreds of hours of work accomplished in the 40 hour work week that we have. Um, and um, really just wish people would listen uh, to what we're what we're trying, the, the overall picture. The other thing that I wanted to let you know is that um, I intend to, when the mayor has time, uh, sit down and talk with the mayor about um, doing some uh, tiny home villages um, because I, I truly think that we could increase the housing in the Northampton uh, area uh, by potentially uh, coming up with some tiny home villages. And I don't know what her position on that is, but it's something that I've had on my plate to talk with her about um, and, and see what our options are because they're so very inexpensive. Uh, Boxable has them for, you know, a little casita is only $50,000, you know? And so you could put a bunch of those on a small piece of property. Um, I'm also working with uh, this, the CDC. I've offered them vouchers for um, their ones behind City Hall. And um, I'm working also with Independent Housing Solutions to provide vouchers for their SROs as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then the next one, this one was uh, from public comment. I just wanted to give you a chance to respond. There was um, a, feel, a feeling of um, tenants who are seniors or disabled feeling um, judged by housing authority staff. And I just wanted to give you a chance. You talked about some of the DEI training um, that the commission is doing, but I wanted to give you a chance to respond um, to that as well. I think that, you know, unfortunately it's very hard to make everyone happy. Um, you know, we did, we did a great event that had really positive feedback um, called Resident Appreciation. And we put together these, you know, little gift baskets. Some of them were um, movie passes with, you know, popcorn and popcorn buckets. Some of them were kitchen, you know, kitchen stuff. Some of it was rent credits. Um, and, and, you know, we had an overwhelming positive response to that. Um, but we, we did have one resident that just took it like we were, um, that we were demeaning the residents and it wasn't done for that. So I think it's all about perception on how people um, are treated in their perception. I am personally, you know, I, I spend, you know, till I spent until midnight on the phone uh, Friday evening um, trying to work on housing some people and work on some issues that some residents were having. Um, I, I think it's just about perception. And if someone has in their mind that we're not providing good customer service, um, you don't necessarily, um, you, you aren't able to turn that around. Um, and some people you just can't make happy. You did address during your presentation um, 
a question that had come up. Um, I apologize, I forgot to write down who was asking these questions, um, but a question around training for the board. And you mentioned um, several trainings, and I don't know if you want to add to that or if you feel like you answered that. Um, I, I mean, I, I, we've, we have given, um, so, so many trainings, um, let me pull them up. Actually, I'm going to tell you what they were. So, uh, DEI training was March and April. Um, and then, uh, there was a series on racism, diversity, equity, in inclusion, and cultural sem sensitivity, September through October of 22. We did financials and budget training, um, for the board members in August of 2019, February of 2022, um, September, well, we tried to do it on September 13th of 2023. Um, uh, that one didn't pan out very well. And then DEI training um, was sent to the board on August 24th of 23. Um, and then the state, um, who has really, um, you know, taken a look at these board meetings that have been happening, um, they sent the board trainings um, on May 30th of 23 and June 21st of 23. Um, and then we did um, board training on open meeting law and board decorum and housing authority commissioner responsibilities on December 17th of 22. And we have another one of those, October 4th of 23. Okay, thank you. And then the final question you had indicated you wanted to defer um, to Chair Carney, and um, it was about agenda setting and how um, we determine which topics are appropriate um, for the agenda. And given that this is listed on the agenda as a roundtable discussion with you um, and others from the, the board, um, I don't think we need to, to vote to recognize Chair Carney. Um, I think you can go ahead and answer this one. Hello, thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Councilor Foster. And before I do, I just want to again thank this committee for having us come. When I was the chair of this committee, I guess it was four years ago, um, and and Councilor Labard was also on the committee then. It was one of my um, most satisfying parts of this committee was hearing the reports from departments that we would invite in to speak with us. Um, and it wasn't very often the Housing Authority, as I recall. Uh, certainly the housing partnership, I think we we're involved with and others, but um, so I do appreciate your having us come by uh, <laughs> to be able to talk to you and tell you, you know, what we're doing down the street there at the housing party. I also wanted to point out um, that there are at least three other board members here on this call. I saw uh, uh, Commissioner, and you heard from all of them, Commissioner Richards, Commissioner Cancel, and Commissioner Tarbutton. There are two other board members that make up our board and they are Jeff Jones, who represents, he is the labor representative on the board and Commissioner Jim Brooks, who is the governor's appointee. So I won't get into, uh, you know, all, but basically of, of the seven of us on the board, five of us have designated, you know, have to come from a particular, um, <clears throat> there's a requirement for us. So your, your question was about how the agenda is set, it's just like the city council. Pretty much the council president meets with the mayor's office to figure out what and you know know what kind of financial orders or things need to come before the board for approval go over all those things for at first um and in the same way if there are if if um as i recall when i was on the council if i wanted to put something on the agenda um the council president would ask me to put the you know write up my uh motion or action that they would want to go before the uh, city council. And then, uh, as, as you know, things need to go then to the city solicitor who evaluates all for not just proper wording and whatnot, but to make sure that you don't have something that's not gonna conflict with state or federal law or even current ordinances as they stand. So similarly, you know, we have those sorts of things. I think that um, maybe there's a little bit of, there's a um, kind of a lack of understanding on ter in terms of what we can deal with as a board so uh we have an executive director who has a contract so we're not we're not a city body in that way we're quasi municipal so we have an executive director who has a contract with very spelled out responsibilities and then we also have state regulations that spell out our board responsibilities 
And it's pretty clear that those things that are, you know, uh, operational are clearly the responsibility of the executive director. And those things that are policy setting are for the board. And I think there's been a little bit of confusion around that. And then some ill feeling, unfortunately, when, it, when there might be something that's not appropriate for the board or that might actually buy it. There was a, a recent question in the last number of months for a particular uh, action that a board member wanted, but to enact that would actually contradict some state requi state law regulation requiring. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was just a very difficult thing to explain. It, it, it did end up going on the agenda, but then was withdrawn by, by the maker of the motion. So, but there, but it, I, I do appreciate the uh, opportunity to answer this because I've heard from some people here on this call, when I watched your last meeting, I heard people say, I say they themselves, that they had heard, which is always a hard thing to deal with. They had heard that people were having a hard time getting things on the agenda. They, they had heard that board members, there was trouble over there on that board. So, you know, um, my sense is that with further education, as we're, we're doing more training, as uh, Commissioner Cancel told you a little earlier about, and Kara just told you about. So I'm hoping that, you know, we're, we're moving upward from that. Um, I do believe that there's also a, um, th there is a lack of understanding responsibility of commissioners on a local housing authority versus city councilors, for example, on a city council. We have a state regulation. In fact, we all got the public housing notice spelling out board responsibilities. You know, and one of them is it actually says that it's a responsibility of a board member to safeguard the reputation of the housing authority. <laughs> now, you know, you would think that's a, that might be a good thing, but it's actually not just a good thing. It's actually required of us by state by those those mass general laws that you heard about earlier. So I thought I thought it was odd when I actually read that because I can't imagine in a city council <laughs> there would be any city councilor who would be. <laughs> Uh, silence from, and it doesn't mean people can't be critical. Obviously, I think it just means that there is a there's there is a desire on the funders, the state and federal government, that we we are able to provide those services and be able to work together and not get distracted by other things. And I think we're as a board, I do have a sense from each of the members that certainly everybody. I'm really grateful for people who showed up today, but in general have been. Um, interested in going to training. I, there's been no pushback around that. I think we all appreciate any opportunity to improve. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, I just want to clarify one thing. Are you okay with that? Sure. Thank you. So um, I just wanna clarify, I know that um, when um, the young man that was on city council, who he's not there anymore, um, had started the whole process of expanding the board. Um, and you know, the, you know, it's very difficult uh, when there's so much in the newspaper and you have to just kind of sit back. Um, you know, originally they had uh opted, and I heard, you know, at your last meeting that I watched, um, that you know, that this was a push to make, you know, all resident board. Um, really. I wanted to explain the process and the makeup of our board a little bit too, um, because um, I think that there's some confusion there too. The old law required one labor rep and one resident, and then the governor's appointee, and then two um, of mayor's choice, uh, residents of Northampton. The new law did um, one housing partnership um, appointee and um, another resident and that could be either of our Section 8 housing or our physical housing. Um, I want to be clear that there is no issue with, um, I have no issue with working with um, uh, commissioners that are uh, residents. Uh, Mr. Hebert was on the board for more than 15 years. Mr. Brooks is a resident and he's on the board. We right now have three current residents on the board, um, even though we're only required to have two, um, and one former resident. And, um, you know, I think that um, it's not, for me anyway, it's not about 
whether they're a resident or not. It's about, um, you know, whether they're a resident that has had issues in the past um, with us. And so um, that makes it for a very difficult meeting um, to get through. And I'm just asking you all to please consider that when appointing someone. Um, you know, you wouldn't appoint someone to a board, uh, to city, to a city council that, you know, has sued Northampton, I would think. So um, maybe we should have conversations um, if it's going to be a resident appointment is all I'm asking for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Edgar and Joella, I see your hands up, but in the interest of time, um, we're, we're pushing 530. Um, the other counselors on the committee haven't yet had a chance um, to address their questions to Director Lieber. So we're going to move forward with the um, council questions at this time. Um, and Laura, I just want to make sure you caught uh, Councillor Perry um, is now present. Um, thank you. I'll make a note of that. Thank you. And um, if you could make him a co-host if he's not sure. already. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Council Labarge, I know you've been waiting a very long time because you had your That's hand fine. up with it, like question two. Um, do, do, do you have um, a question for Director Leeper? Uh, I'm very pleased hearing from the chair. I thought that was important, especially with what we had asked <clears throat> at number 11, okay? And where we had Kara come out and say, well, she would like to defer this to the chairperson. Well, I thought that was a critical statement there to hear from the chair, and we did. And I think that the chair, Maureen Carney, did an excellent job also in explaining the process about the state regulations. That is critical, critical. They have to follow those rules and setting up an agenda right down the line through the state regulations. So I want to thank you, Chair, um, for having this meeting. I think all of our questions, my questions, reading what Kara had to say to us with uh, what we presented to her was very valuable. It's, I think it's opened up a lot of people's eyes of knowing exactly what that board can do and cannot do. So I want to I want to thank you all for that. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. Councilor Gore. Yeah, um, I want to echo that. Thank you, um, Director Leeper and um, Chair Carney. Um, it was really informative. I am glad to see that there's been reaching out to tenants for tenants association and um, that you took care of the bed bug situation. Um, I know that was costly, but needed, and I'm glad that was taken care of. And um, I like the idea of a tiny home village. I think that would really help Northampton. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Um, you talked about uh, tenant rep representation. So um, is that full now, or do you have room for tenant reps now? So, oh, Madam Chair, would you like me to address that? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, it's it's fine to go ahead and directly answer council questions. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you um, um, Ms. Gore. I appreciate the, the question. So the way that the way it works is um, the appointments are done by the mayor. And so our governor's representative, um, uh, when when the position became open, um, there was a resident here uh, who had approached and and showed interest. And um, so way back then um, I, he didn't care whether he was a mayoral appointee or a governor appointee. So I helped him with the application process to do either. Um, and he's been on um, for quite a, quite a long time. Um, we're only required to have two residents. Um, one is a, a, is, um, a, a representative um, from state, which is currently Commissioner Tarbot in Springfield. Um, and then one can be either um, the state housing or uh, the uh, voucher, a voucher holder. Um, but we have Mr. Brooks in our federal housing 
and um, and we also have a former resident, um, Commissioner Kensell. Uh, you know, but that doesn't preclude that the governor can appoint anyone that she would like. Um, and and again, it's not about with, that they're a resident or not. Although, you know, please consider that if um, it's a resident, um, it it could create issues around um, ethics. It could create issues around whether they could vote on something or not, um, dependent upon um, if it's a property that they live at. Um, and, um, you know, it, it could be problematic if it's more, you know, if they're a resident. Um, I think that's why the initial had one resident. Um, we now have two, but we actually have three in place. Did I answer your question well? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, um, if it's okay, because I, I just, oh. could I clarify on that? Commissioner Foster? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. I don't think that any of the legislation that was, there's not, so we are required to have at least two residents now. And it's not meant to be seen as a cap. So theoretically, it could be entirely board of, uh, of residents if time, you know, if that were the case. But the point that I think I heard Director Leeper saying was that the resident, the residency is not so much the criteria to consider rather than those other questions that you might deem appropriate for someone to be on a board of a housing authority. Certainly we need resident representation. And I think we, I, I think when I came on in the fall, we actually had four residents, you know? So I think that we do exceed in terms of co co comparative to the state. That's all. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, the other thing, well, you kind of touched on, but I know that Dr. Bossi had talked about like degradation in board meetings. Um, I just wondered if you could address that or how you felt about that, either one of you. Well, well I, I will because um, you know, I think that in the in the last number of months we had, so I think a lot of it is communications. You know, you don't know when you receive an email from somebody, you can't necessarily uh, see their face or understand their tone. And, you know, I think um, in, in my case, I read aloud an email from another board member who I, in my mind, I felt was making some unfair accusations of me and the board. And so I felt the most appropriate thing and transparent thing was to just read that, read that aloud and address those questions as they were presented to me in the email. And I think it angered a lot of people, you know, in some ways, you know, I've had a lot of discussions with people and some uh, soul searching even since then. I don't, I, I don't think it was an unhealthy thing for us to do ultimately. I do think it did clear, clear the air of some things and, I think it pushed us further towards getting training on some issues. And I'm hoping, hoping that in some of those scenarios where it's not a board meeting, where there is some, you know, interaction that some of the, and even, you know, those trust issues that were mentioned earlier can, you know, be repaired. But, you know, I'm sure it made interesting viewing for the 214 views I saw that it had on YouTube. And, you know, and I think that's great. I'm really glad that these meetings are televised and that, that's my opinion of, of that. Um, some other people might may feel differently, but I don't know if that's something that um, Councillor Foster wants to uh, manage. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Councillor Gore, did, did you have a follow-up? Um, no, I think that was all my questions. Thank you so much for uh, coming today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I have to say that when I first started uh, here, um, I came from the private sector. I didn't get involved with politics. I just went with what was right. Um, and so I went back and I reviewed the minutes from when they expanded our board. And you know, I was very disappointed in, in some of the outright untruths that were told to the city council uh, to get our board expanded. Um, and so, you know, I, I firmly believe in the um, proof is in the product and um, we, we have done so much to help so many people 
um, residents, applicants, um, employees, uh, because quite honestly, this is where I started life. I started life in public housing and um, I just happened to work really hard to come out of it. And so, um, you know, I love helping people. And as Lee had said today, when I walked into MANA and I, I saw one of my patients, family members, and she was just so happy. It made me happy to see her too, um, because that was a time in my life that was hospice patients and dealing with people that aren't going to make it. You know, now I'm able to help people that are going to make it and that can make it and can have a better life. Um, you know, so I try to help people learn how to use public housing as a stepping stone, um, or sometimes it's a, a, it's an end of life choice, and um, it's a, it's a very difficult job. But I absolutely love what I do, and so does my staff. And I appreciate you letting me come here to talk about it. And Councillor Perry. Um... Just to acknowledge, we changed the um, timing of our meeting. We moved it forward an hour to accom accommodate the NHA meeting later this evening. And um, unfortunately, that time uh, wasn't doable for Councillor Perry. So here you are. Um, and I, I don't mean to call you up, but I wanted to see if you had any questions or wanted a chance to address um, Director Leeper. Thank you, Councillor Foster. And I do apologize for not being here on time, but uh, it is hard to be everywhere with kids. Um, yep. And and I think that I'm I'm gonna go back. And this thing this is recorded, so I'm gonna go back and listen and do some some research before I ask any questions that have already been asked. Um, but I do thank you all for your time and for coming to speak to us because I've I have actually attended a number of the most recent uh, meetings, and so I I was concerned as well uh, about some of the issues that I saw, and and um, I'm looking forward to diving into what you have presented today. So thank you for your time. And if at any time you, uh, Councillor Perry, once you get a chance to read it, you know, if you have any questions, I'm always available, you know, shoot me a text, just shoot me an email. Um, you know, like I said, I was uh, dealing with people until midnight. So uh, I would never text you at that hour, but certainly yes. feel free to reach out and and I'm happy to clarify anything that I, that I can. Um, so thank you. Well, thank you. And I'll probably be up at that time too, because I'm a night owl, so. I'm not. I'm old. <laughs> uh, Councillors Gore or Labarge, did you have any follow ups? Okay. Great. So, seeing none. So, again, just to clarify, um, I know I, I'd seen a couple of hands as we were discussing. So this is this is background information for the City Council and Committee Services. Our our role in this is that we um, confirm or don't confirm mayoral appointees to the Northampton Housing Authority. That's that's the role of the City Services Committee. And so um, today is very much for our background and we do anticipate that there will be appointments coming forward. And so, um, you know, if there's additional follow-up, additional information um, that folks would like um, us to have, I do invite you to reach out um, so that we have that information as, as we move forward um, with our role as a committee. We're not taking any votes today. There's no um, direct action um, today related to today's discussion. Um, so with that, we will let our guests um, go prepare for their next meeting. Um, and thank you again for, for joining us. Um, I, I learned a lot today and I, I very much appreciate all of you um, who are here from um, the Housing Authority taking the time to be here. Thank you um, for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you. Know... Uh, thank you, Lori. Thank you. We do have two city appointments before us, um, and I appreciate your patience. Um, but I wanted to see, counselors, do you need a quick recess before we move forward? Are you doing okay? All right, then here we are. We can allow our guests, um, our next guests, um, to wait no longer. Um, so we're up at item six, items referred to committee, and very similar, um, just a process note for people who aren't as familiar with our work, um, uh, mayoral appointees to boards and commissions come before the city council committee and city services as do mayoral appointments for department heads. And we have um, two before us today and look forward to a chance to talk with you. 
And Mayor, I see you have turned on the camera, which is the surest sign that you would probably like to introduce your appointments. Great. Oh, you can't unmute. How's that? Excellent. Good evening, counselors. Um, thank you for that uh, that great discussion that you just had about Northampton Housing Authority too. I was happy to listen in. Um, but I am here for um, a very exciting reason to uh, to introduce two appointments um, for directors. So um, I think the order you have them on your agenda, if I'm correct, is mm -hmm. Chad Dunham and then Carol Collins. Is that right? Yep, that is correct. So would you like me to talk about Chad and then we'll we'll and then we'll move on to Carol? So we'll do Chad entirely first. Uh, that that works for me if that works for your timing being part of our meeting tonight. Absolutely. Let's do I, it. As long as you need me. Okay. Well, I am very pleased to introduce Chad Dunham as my appointee for the Director of Human Services for the City of Northampton. Um, while Glenda Stoddard leaves an incredible legacy after decades of service to the city, she also leaves us in a very strong position by identifying Chad, um, who has proactively been shaping his own path in the HR field as, uh, as her worthy successor. Chad has taken the initiative to fully immerse himself in every aspect of human resources. Um, alongside Glenda, he's actually participated in his professional development, amassing an extensive, sorry, a cat is jumping up on my thing, um, amassing extensive uh, understanding of employment law, labor relations, and employment um, employee management. Chad has also gained valuable experience in benefit and payroll administration, along with acquiring institutional knowledge that is very specific to our city. He's deeply familiar with the contracts of all 13 collective bargaining units and comprehends the nuances of the city's various employee policies. Chad is our city's expert in some of the most detail-oriented, difficult aspects of attracting and keeping quality public servants here in the city. He's mastered the specifics of employee benefits, insurance reconciliations, Family Medical Leave Act administration, workers compensation coordination, um, and along with all of the other sections of the city's human resources department. Um, I think you've read his background materials. Um, uh, Mr. Dunham is a graduate of Anna Maria College with a bachelor's in business administration. He has a master's of business administration and management from Springfield College and a certificate in local government leadership and management from Suffolk University and uh, the MMA. I deeply respect the quality and outcomes of the CEFIC program. Um, I've seen its impact on two of my direct staff, both Annie Lesko and Alan Wolf, um, were classmates of Chad's in that program. Um, so uh, personally, Mr. Dunham is originally from Framingham. He moved to Northampton after his undergraduate studies and fell in love with the city, like we all are in love with the city. Um, so I am fully confident in that uh, Chad is ready and exceptionally well qualified to assume this vital role as Director of Human Resources for the city. And with that, I'm happy to hand it over to him or to you. Thank you, Mayor. And Chad, welcome. Um, and I'll hand it over to you first if you'd like to address the committee and then we'll open it up to um, council questions for you. Um, and you don't have to, it's just an opportunity. Sure, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Chad, can you angle your camera a little bit? Sure. You had a good view of the a top new of your setup, head. Up, so I'm, I'm yep. getting used to it. <laughs> um, so I appreciate the opportunity to, to be here today. Um, I'm really excited for this opportunity. I feel like, you know, the past um, almost seven years with the city have been um, really, I, I guess, for my own professional development, um, just really key. And uh, over the last maybe year and a half, um, Glenda has really taken me under her wing and I, I've, I've experienced contract negotiations and um, just really, it's really been a, a, a pleasure to, uh, to serve the city for you know, the last, the last seven years. And, um, I'm, I'm hoping to, to be able to do that, um, going forward. So, uh, thank you for, for having me today. Um, counselors, do you, do you have questions for Mr. Denham? I, I have one for you. Well, uh, if, well, people think what, you know, I know that it's, um, it's beyond the city of Northampton, and I think it's even beyond any particular department. Um, but filling 
filling jobs. And then also I'm, I hear um, and experience myself quite a bit the way the sort of workforce has changed in the last few years as far as employee expectations. Um, and I'm curious um, what thoughts or ideas you have both around uh, recruitment and retention. Um, yeah, so so I think a lot has changed, uh, especially you know in the last three years, um, and you know it's it's uh, there's sort of you know we have a a lot of different different occupations to fill. I think um, you know exploring things like more recently, like we've done with you know remote work for positions where it works. You know it in order to attract, you know, the talent that the city wants to attract. Um, you know, I think, I think just being open-minded about, um, you know, what needs to, or what, what may need to change with our policies and our, our contracts, um, is, is just really key to, I guess, you know, attracting that talent. I think, um, you know, I, I think, just being open-minded about, you know, how we need to adapt to the the new, um, just the new uh, way the world works, I guess, uh, would be my answer. So thank you. And is that, if I could follow up, actually, just I'm, I'm curious, really, um, how, is that something you're doing that work like sort of hand in hand with other department heads as as they're hiring, figuring out, can this position be remote, or is this question something we can, or this request something we can accommodate? Um, how are you, how are you working with the other department heads? So um, the remote work piece is uh, a lot of it is by union. So um, we have already, you know, negotiated that piece with one of the unions, but um, yeah, really, it is really. Um, you know, about leaving it up to the department head. And, you know, if the department head thinks that that sort of thing can work, uh, then we can find it. Well, you know, we try to find a way to, um, you know, allow it. So yeah, it really is a, a big uh, collaboration piece with the other department heads. I just add one little thing. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that I really appreciate Chad's willingness to be um, creative with me about thinking about you know, new different places to recruit and new ways to recruit, um, you know, just kind of trying to find different areas where, um, where we haven't advertised positions before and, um, and trying to really sort of tap into, to different pools of folks and make them know that working for the city of Northampton is a really great, um, you know, we're a great employer and, um, and that, uh, we hope that they would consider, um, a position here. If you know, it, municipal work is very particular, um, but and so a lot of people don't don't necessarily think about it, um, even though their area of expertise could overlap with it. Um, so I appreciate how um, you know Chad. I think is 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 excited for this new challenge and new era, and we've had some good conversations about how we can um, be more creative and just kind of adapt with the times. Mm -hmm. Other counselors, do you do you have um, any follow up questions? See, we've we've all met you, um, and uh, I think that's a a sign uh, from the council. Um, so then we'll we'll need a motion. I make a motion. I second that motion. <laughs> okay, was that a motion for approval, Council Lavarge? Yes. Okay. I, I'm. I'm the, and thank you, Council Perry. The the words detail oriented, you know, are like <laughs> flashing in front of me. Um, okay, so it's so mo a motion made by Council Labarge, seconded by Council Perry. Um, any discussion on that motion? Okay, Laura, would you call roll call, please? Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Perry. Yes. Okay, that motion passes four to zero. Thank you so much for your time and for being here. Thank you, counselors. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. <laughs> Mayor, the ball, the ball is back in your in your court. I'm gonna do a lot of metaphors tonight. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'll try and volley them back. I don't know.
Sure. Or pick up the <laughs> racket. I <don't>, yeah. <laughs> Horse metaphors are not my best, but I'll do my, I'll give it a shot. Um, okay. So I am extremely thrilled to introduce you all to Carol Collins um, as my appointee for the inaugural, as the inaugural director of our new Climate Action and Project Administration Department, or CAPA, as we call it affectionately. Um, as you know, the creation of CAPA is a very exciting milestone for the city, born out of a collaboration with the Northampton Climate Emergency Coalition mm -hmm. and the City Council, and aligned with the goals of our comprehensive sustainability plan. This new department is designed to accelerate our environmental goals while also implementing robust project management principles across all city endeavors. Northampton is very fortunate to have Carol Collins for this role. She is an undisputed local leader in the field of sustainability. A resident of Leeds, so a, a homegrown resident here, um, Carol has been at the forefront of green architecture and sustainable land use of planning for decades. For nine years, she has led the Department of Energy and Sustainability in Greenfield, which remains the only such department um, in Western Mass. Under her guidance, Greenfield has achieved significant milestones, including a 25% reduction in municipal wide energy consumption since 2016 and the completion of Massachusetts first property assessed clean energy project. Her academic credentials are equally impressive, boasting a bachelor's in ecological building design from UMass Amherst and a master's focused on sustainable development from Antioch University, New England. CAPA will combine the existing work in planning, sustainability, city energy management, and procurement into a single department. By consolidating functions from the Office of Planning and Sustainability, the Central Services Department, and the Office of the Auditor, we aim to create a more coordinated approach for a sustainable and efficient Northampton. With Carol's solid experience and proven leadership, she's the right person to lead CAPA as we lead as a city with this new department, and I am thrilled to introduce her all to you. Thank you and welcome, Carol. Um, same as with Chad, we'll give you a chance if you'd like to address us and then a chance for counselors to ask questions. Thank you very much and, and thank you, Mayor, for that wonderful introduction. It's uh, great to be with you all tonight and I am just very excited. I'm, I've always been impressed with Northampton's commitment to uh, achieve climate goals and carbon neutrality, and I am very impressed with the CAPA department, and I'm really excited that I um, have the opportunity to, to lead this great new um, pathway to, to achieving our goals. Thank you. Thank you. Um, questions from the committee? Council Gore. Hi, um, it's nice to meet you. Um, I just had a question about the um, Climate Emergency Coalition. Um, how do you plan, do you plan to work with the Climate Emergency Coalition and how do you plan to work with them? Uh, well, thank you for the question. And I've already been in touch with uh, some of the, I was actually uh, asked to provide input when the department was being kind of fleshed out by them last year. And so I've worked with several of the members already in different capacities. And I've been in touch since I was offered the position and will be meeting with them and, and would love to hear their priorities and kind of, so we can have an open conversation and, and work together. And um, so, uh, I don't know if I'm, Adele Franks had reached out and um, we expect to have a meeting, more of like a meeting greet to kind of get the process started with, with the coalition members. So I look forward to kind of having a collaborative or, you know, having a, a, a open dialogue so that we can all work together. Thanks, that sounds, that sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. That's on the barge. Yes. Um, Carol, I I do have a question. Jamila answered one of them, and I thank her for that. Is like with our fire department, our new fire chief, he's going to continue on sending counselors upgrades, like you know, fire truck calls, ambulance calls, and stuff. Would we be getting some form of information from you, Carol? 
periodically on updates of how this new department is moving forward? So I would say that's, I would say yes. And I, I would say that the format or the frequency can be determined. Right now, in my position in Greenfield, I looked at our budget book, the annual budget as a way to convey, I, I felt like that was sort of my annual report to, to make the community aware of, of achievements and goals for the following year. But I've also done monthly reports or quarterly updates. So, so um, I will say, you know, it gets tough because when you're trying to get stuff done, doing the paperwork part can um, sometimes become a secondary. But again, if uh, I would say there's always press around accomplishments and events or, or um, you know, important information, and then there can just be a regular uh, check in. However, again, you know, I look forward to feedback to seeing what works best for for those interested. Thank you very much, Carol. You're welcome. That's a Perry. Yes, uh, Carol, it's so great to meet you. Thank you for coming here. I um, heard a lot about you. And I'm really excited for this department. And I was just wondering, I guess I have two questions. One, I am wondering what you are excited about working on or what priorities you have. I know that it is a huge task to try and deal with our climate emergency. So I know that you can't do everything, but I was wondering that. Um, and then I guess other than priorities, my other question is, is education I think is a big part of what we're gonna need uh, mm -hmm. in order to combat climate change. And so I'm wondering if you have any <laughs> ideas of how to really educate our, our city and, and our constituents. Wow, those are easy questions. So, um, but <laughs> I would say I've I've learned that I I seem to love a challenge. So I'm just super excited. It is massive and 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 it is overwhelming. But there's been so much great work already performed in Northampton. So it's great to uh, kind of pick up the the helm and and move forward. And I've already been working on some some ideas on how to prioritize the best kind of efforts to make to achieve the, the biggest impact. So um, I think uh, I'm just really excited because that, you know, I, I bring a lot of experience and, and it's kind of a new playground to kind of try to uh, pursue all, all these different methods. And when you talk about education, that's, you know, a very, very key component. And this is a fast evolving field and which is great and we need it. The education piece, it's things are changing so quickly that that I feel like that's um, definitely a challenge, but it's definitely very, very important. So, it, it, you know, we, the more you inform people and the more they understand that, you know, the goal is to have people buy into what's happening and understand why it's necessary and answer any questions. And um, so I found that that's just inherent with this type of work anyway. And, uh, and then there's also, I mean, talk about the devil being in the details. That's, that's pretty much everything in, in this field is goes into the minutia. But um, so I think there's a real, um, uh, nuance to providing enough information to be helpful and informative without overwhelming people. So I feel like that's that's a really kind of key line to walk and something that I, I work very hard to, to achieve. I just add something to that. Um, and this also goes to Council the Barge question a little bit. Um, you know, communication around how we are working towards achieving our goals is one of the the main things that I want Kappa to take on. Um, you know, I think we, we've we had a lot of feedback from folks that, um, you know, they didn't know necessarily what the goals were and they certainly didn't know that we had been working to achieve them and sort of how we're, we are kind of putting the pieces together. So um, I wanna make sure that we are communicating again, as Carol said, in sort of a, a succinct, clear way. And there's a lot of detail there, but that people, um, sort of understand the frame of it and that um, we can show how we are 
um, we're building towards reaching these goals. And so, and what our plans are, you know, like our capital improvement program mm -hmm. has many elements to it that, that are building towards reaching the goals. Um, but we need to connect those dots for folks so that they know that all of these things that we're doing um, are with, uh, with all of this in mind and viewed through that lens. Thank you, Mayor. Sure. Are there other questions from other counselors? Let's see. I'll jump in for a second. Um, Carol, yeah, you're you're um, coming into a position with, I think, very high hopes and expectations from the community. Um, you know, it's something that that many people are very invested in, and um, you know, I, I I think a lot of us as counselors have been looking at the capital improvement plan and, and all this eye towards sustainability. And it's exciting to see city resources um, focused on that. Um, and, and you know, you being at the helm to make sure that the city is, is continually focused on, on reaching those goals. Um, I guess I didn't have a question. I, I more so had a comment, but uh, if there are no other questions from the committee, um, then I would entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion made by Councillor Perry, seconded by Councillor Gore. And now I'm back to my flashing red light. Um, the the motion and and detail oriented. The motion would actually be to make a positive recommendation. Um, if you'd be willing to amend that motion. Yes, yeah, I will. I will make uh, a motion to have a positive recommendation for approval. Thank, thank you, Councillor Perry. And I'll second. All right. Thank you very much. Any discussion on that motion? Jemai Leggett. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I said I, I, uh, any discussion on that motion. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor Gore, for seconding the motion. Yes. Um, <laughs> then, Laura, we can do a roll call. Councilor Gore. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Perry. Yes. And Councilor Foster. Yes. So that motion passes four to zero. Carol, congratulations. Um, we'll see, well, this will come back to the full council um, very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And um, councilors, we're, we're nearing there, but that does have me, I just wanna make sure that we have uh, dotted our I's and crossed our T's. Laura, do you think we should revisit the motion we did um, for Chad Dunham, um, I think we moved approval. Do you think that's close enough to positive recommendation? That's how I understood it as okay. a positive recommendation was great, going to great. put it as such. Okay, great. That, that was, we all understood it that way. That was a clear intent. All right, thank you. Um, so that brings us up to our last agenda item, which is just a, an update on the um, barriers report implementation matrix. Um, and just have a couple. One is um, just to draw your attention, we do have um, did develop, uh, thank you, Laura, for your work on this, um, the board applicant standard questions um, so that when we have um, uh, appointees to boards and commissions, we have a set of standard questions that we're not held to these questions, but they're a launching point and an agreement that as counselors will um, ask these questions. Um, the other one, Laura, I wanted to, to follow up or, or ask as well, there was um, a discussion about when an appointee for a border commission um, first appears on the city council agenda um, for referral. Right. We had discussed um, UCCing the agenda out to the chair of that border commission. And I don't believe we've had an appointment since we had that discussion, but just wanted to revisit that because um, I would anticipate we've, we've got them coming soon. Yes, and that's a good reminder to me and I intend to do that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, to see, see, yeah, no, I don't believe I, I haven't actually done it yet to this point, but um, yes, that I will incorporate that into my process. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, that that was the intention there. Um, just to revisit, not for you, but for all of us, um, is to flag for the chair of a border committee that an appointment is coming before city council, and that would give them an opportunity then um, to participate in that process if if desired. Okay. Um, and then I had a little homework um, discussions in the mayor's office um, that I will bring back to our November meeting. Um, are there other questions, updates um, from other counselors? 
either that or or new business. Okay. All right, then um, that brings us to item nine. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, <laughs> motion made by Councillor Gore, seconded by Councillor Labarge. Thank you. Um, no discussion on adjournment. So, Laura, if you could take a roll call. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Okay, that passes four to zero.